Hey, what's up everybody? I'm back in my shop again. Uh, this time I'm going to do a race review from the Girton Classic 2019. 2015, 2016, 2017. Okay, so I've done it three times. 2018, they didn't, they didn't do the race, and now it's back on 2019. However, the big difference is in uh, 2019 is it's not a mountain bike race anymore, it's a road bike race. And I've never done a road bike race, but I was kind of comfortable doing this one because I did do the Girton Classic uh, three times prior, and I kind of know the culture of this race, race, which is kind of laid back compared to like what I see uh, other road races. This is kind of like everybody can do it. There's a lot of them. You know, it's pretty laid back for a uh, road race. Anyway, uh, yeah, so... Prior to this road race, I hadn't done any other riding except for the week prior, I did the EKZ. So that was the only training was EKZ, and then prior to that, I hadn't done any real riding in a long time. So, however, I was still suffering a little bit from my crash in the EKZ race on my hip. It ended up like kind of hurting quite a bit and I had a big bruise. So I was a little bit uh, sore from that still, but I don't really think that affected me too much. This is a long video, so I'm just gonna get started right here. This is the beginning of the race. I tried again to start kind of towards the back because I knew I wasn't really that fast compared to a lot of the other riders. In this race, I am using my converted mountain bike to road bike. I bet I'm the only person in the entire race riding on a mountain bike. Well, not riding on a mountain bike. I did see a couple actually other mountain bikes, but I'm probably the only person in here that's riding a mountain bike converted to a road bike. If you want to see that video, I'll put the link in the description below, maybe an info ball up top. It's one of my more popular videos. And uh, anyway, here we go. It's getting started. Um, I, I, my strategy here was, okay, this is a 40 kilometer race with um, maybe 1,000, 1,200 meters climbing. I, I don't remember, honestly. Something like one, around 1,000, 1,200 meters climbing. So I, once again, I knew I'd have plenty of time to suffer. So I wanted to take the beginning easy. I certainly didn't want to wipe out on these wet roads with all the other racers around me. So I took a very easy at the beginning, knowing I'm gonna have plenty of time to really stretch my legs and work as hard as I feel. And uh, that didn't take long because right at this left-hand corner here, we're already starting on our first incline. And yeah, we're going up and my heart rate's already pretty getting pretty high. Whoa, I just noticed that. Check it out, right on the right, uh, there's a bike hack right there. It looks like somebody took a water bottle and he's using that is a mud guard. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. I didn't notice that until just now. Anyhow, um, here I am getting started up the up the uh, hill. My heart rate's already risen pretty high, but at this point, I still f still feel totally good, not tired at all. So the bike itself was set up pretty simple. I had a frame bag with a pump, a multi-tool, one extra tube and my water bottle. That's pretty much it. So a really simple setup. I didn't even have any bike computer uh, on this ride. I did have my running watch actually with my heart rate monitor and that's how I was capturing my heart rate and GPS. So this part here got pretty steep. I don't know exactly the grade but it was pretty darn steep. And here you see on the left there was also an e-bike category so there was a handful of e-bikes you know passing us up on this first climb. I don't think there were that many e-bikes in the race in total. I did look at the registration and it was something like, I don't know, 10 or 15 in total. There was probably um, 250, I don't know, 300 regular bikes registered. They did have age categories. Uh, I don't remember how they were broken down. I think mine was in the 30 year olds because I'm 37 now. So it was like 30 to 40 or something. And they had men's and women's and there were a whole lot more uh, men racing than women. This bike here, I don't really know if that's an e-bike or not. I guess probably it is. But the Girton Classic, that's the type of race it is. It's like pretty casual. People were, even in prior years when it was a mountain bike race, people were riding on all kinds of different bike. But anyway, yeah, during the other Girton Classic, um, I remember people passing me by with like fenders and like bike locks still attached. You know, like they just came from the train station or something. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So here I'm still trying to take it kind of easy. Uh, actually, I know this part of the course because this part is actually the same as the mountain bike course. I remember this uh, long straightaway here. The speeds were definitely higher. I would like to compare these times compared to when I was on the mountain bike, but I, I felt like on the road bike, even though it was totally wet, I uh, felt like the speeds were higher. Many of the times on the other Girton Classic, the mountain bike one, it's also quite wet. I remember one year, I think it was the last time I did the race, 2017, it was raining at the bottom and snowing at the top. That was pretty cool. I think today we were around five, five degrees Celsius. 
uh, which I'm not sure that must be in the 40s in Fahrenheit. At this point here, we're just going through some town and uh, these guys in front of me and there's a couple behind me, we kind of formed a small group, rode together during a good bit of the race. We would pass each other off and on, ride together off and on. It wasn't like there was any kind of team here, but we just kind of, you know, knew we were similar in, in power, so we just kind of stuck together a bit, used each other's uh, draft slipstream, as they call it in cycling. Nothing too exciting here. Here we're getting out into the country. I actually really like this because I feel very comfortable. I do a lot of my riding on roads like this when I'm by myself, so I kind of like these type of roads. You do have to watch out for the occasional stone that gets like thrown from the farm uh, crops. But um, yeah, it's pretty safe out here. No cars, really no traffic. Oh, and by the way, speaking of cars, this race was done on a set circuit and there were like people controlling the traffic, but it was still open to cars generally. So sometimes cars were passing us. As you can see in that one clip, the bus was actually passing us by. So we did have to be a bit careful of the traffic. They said we need to follow the traffic rules and stuff like that. So that was kind of a, I guess, unique thing for road bike racing, but that's the way it is at the Girton Classic. This is just typical Switzerland in the fall. I mean, this looks exactly like, if you're not ever, if you've never been in Switzerland, there's probably most of you haven't uh, who are watching this. This is really, really typical looking stuff. I've rode pretty much across the whole country and spent a lot of time riding here. And what you see here, it looks very typical for the fall time. It's rainy, it's wet, it's cool. And there's a lot of these farm roads all over the place. This is 100% typical. <laughs> I was suffering a little bit during the ride. I mean, I wouldn't say I was like pushing it super, super hard, but I was trying to balance it. I knew it was gonna be a couple hour ride, so I was trying to balance it and not go crazy, but I also was trying not to let myself be too comfortable. I remember, let me back it up a second. I could see this guy in the green and I wanted to kind of bridge the gap, as I say, from the guy that it was riding behind me for quite a while. And I wanted to catch up to this guy in green. So I was pushing a little bit harder than usual, trying to catch up to this guy in the green. He was a pretty big dude, pretty tall, I remember. So I thought that I could catch up to him and just stay behind him a little bit to take advantage of the draft. Sorry, I keep saying draft because when I was a kid, I was watching NASCAR a lot. And that's what you say in NASCAR. They're in the draft, you know, and they're the drafting. I think in cycling, it's more like slipstream. So I tried to ride just behind these guys. I was a little bit tired from catching up to them. The guy in red was an older gentleman. I don't know how old, probably, probably like 50 or so. He was kind of like on and off uh, going fast and slow. So we passed him right there. But later on, he would pass us again. The green guy, I liked riding with him. He was really like consistent. And like I said, he was pretty big, so I could get behind him and take advantage of, of him pushing the wind. But when we got to the top of that climb, I felt like the uh, guy in green was getting a little bit tired, so I went ahead and passed him up. And he didn't try to follow. I think I'll see him later on, though. I think he'll catch up to me at some point later. on a little descent and that's the story of this uh, ride it was just a lot of ups and downs he, here you can see the profile basically there's like it, as you go on the climbs get bigger and the descents get bigger but it's like up and down up and down climb descend climb descend climb descend and the climbs got bigger and descents got bigger as the race went on here comes a car coming against us as you can see um, there is traffic oh, yeah even on these farm roads there are some cars sometimes and here's the older gentleman in the uh, Thomas kit passing me up. He ended up uh, proving to be a really good climber. And I think he was telling me something in Swiss German that I honestly didn't really understand. And it was just like with the wind, it was too loud to really ask him. I think he was saying maybe there was something wrong with his bike. I'm not really sure. But it seemed like when we got on the flats, he wasn't really going that fast. So I'm like, maybe his front mech wasn't working or something but I found it pretty easy to go around him on the flats, but then on the climbs, he was passing me. And we kind of yo-yoed like this a, a number of times. Here I go, passing him on the flats once again, as I mentioned. 
at this point, I thought it was pretty safe to go ahead and try to eat my my nutrition bar, whatever it was, just some kind of random power bar that I bought at the, uh, I don't remember where I bought it, but <laughs> bought it somewhere. And here we go on another climb. And here goes the Thomas guy passing me up once again. This part I thought was really pretty when I was coming up on this. I was like, oh, cool, we're coming into some clouds or fog or whatever you want to call it. I don't know, I really like that. I'll never forget, like, I guess being in Switzerland, that's where I discovered these type of, like, riding in cloud situations. Coming from Florida, I never really experienced that, but I love riding my bike, my mountain bike, up in the mountains and just, like, coming into a cloud, coming out of the clouds. That's so beautiful. I really will never forget that. I mean, even though it's ugly and it's rainy and cloudy and wet, it's actually, in a way, beautiful. I think it is. I love to look at it. I love being on my bike. Maybe not when I'm pushing like I am in a race, but just like when I'm riding by myself. I love being out there just like even in ugly weather, as long as I'm not too cold and not too too soaked. I just love being out there and just seeing the view. It's <clears throat> You wouldn't think it's like that beautiful, but it really can be. Uh, it's not like the perfect, like pristine blue sky and Swiss Alps everywhere. This is a little bit different. This is like the pre-Alps or just the smaller mountains. Um, but it's still really beautiful to see with all the clouds and the fog. Sometimes like you even get like the, the clouds are going really fast and just, you can see them just like going over the hills and that's so cool. And here for some reason, I was able to pass him on the climb, which was like the first time I ever passed him on a climb. I'm not really sure why he was just getting tired or sleeping or what, but I went ahead and decided to pass him up on the climb. But then here where it got steeper, there he goes passing me back again. Okay, now what you're about to see is this is, um, basically I kind of skipped a good chunk, but this is basically coming to the end of the race. This road I know, because this is the same road that the, uh, the Girton Classic mountain bike races on, and there's that Thomas guy right in front of me, but I was so beat at this point. There's a lot of really steep climbs at the end, as you can see the profile, it ends up in a, in a big climb. And anyway, like I was saying, I know this part of the climb, which is cool because I kind of know how much further, and I know that we're getting really close to the end. We're just like a few kilometers from the finish, but this is where it gets super, super steep. And even though um, I know it's the end, and even though I'm starting to be happy, I also know that this part gets really, really steep, and I know that my road bike doesn't have as low of a gear as my mountain bike does, and I know I suffer like heck on my mountain bike during these parts. <laughs> But here, I, in this part of the video, I just finished some of that most steepest climb. Now it kind of flattens out a little bit. I mean, you're still going up, I, I don't know, like five degrees, seven degrees, something like that. But it's flattened out a little bit. And at this point, you're literally like less than a kilometer from the finish. So I'm getting pretty excited. I'm like, okay, just give it all I got. Here we go, this is the finish. Uh, I knew I couldn't catch the Thomas guy. He ended up getting away on, on the climb. And I knew the people behind me were really far. So I was just kind of out there on my own at this point. I also knew that I also knew the photographers were up here so I was getting, thinking about that I'm like all right let me see if I can set myself up for a cool photo there's some typical Swiss cows out there on the left and here we go this is the very last climb I've done this climb uh, I think nine times in the past because I've done the Girton Classic three times but I've trained for it in other years before the race so if you look at my Strava um, I have nine entries, eight of them before this one. And so at this point, I'm pretty much giving it 98% effort just trying to get up here, getting some nice support from the kids. Unfortunately, I didn't get to record more of that, but the kids are so cool. They're always like clapping for you saying, hop, 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 because that's what they say here means go, go, go. And um, yeah, here we are at the finish. Right up there where you see the people standing is the highest point on the Girton. This is the peak. I don't really know what the elevation of the Girton is. Probably like just throwing a number out there, like 600 meters. Uh, it's not super high. 600 meters, you know, total elevation from the sea. There's some photographers, so I'm trying to look cool there. I ended up not buying the photos. I think they're too expensive. They want eight francs, eight bucks basically for the digital ones. And uh, they want like 24 for the whole set, which has like, I don't know, 10 photos or something like that. And I just don't want to spend that much. Here we go on the left, A uh, that little triangle thing marks the highest point on this small mountain. And here's where it flattens out and there's no more climbing. This is just a sprint to the finish. 
And, uh, you know, I didn't want to go crazy sprinting because the roads are so wet. I know there's like a little downhill section. Um, so I just kind of took it easy. I know, knew, I know, I knew nobody was going to pass me and I knew I wasn't going to pass anybody, but I still wanted to give it, you know, like half decent effort to the finish. But at this point, I'm just like so happy. I feel so good. I'm like, yes, I did it. I finished it. Uh, I know I'm not that fast, but I didn't crash any. So yeah, I was really happy at this point. And this is the fourth time I finished the Girton Classic. And there it is, it's finished. I'm always pretty happy right now at this point. <laughs> so that's pretty much my experience on the Girton Classic. Really nothing crazy happened on this race. It was a great race, so I really enjoyed it. I'd say I enjoyed it more than the EKZ. Uh, I don't know why, but it just seemed like it was not so painful. Well, I didn't crash, that's one thing. Uh, it just kind of seemed like a cool ride. There goes a guy I finished behind me probably just I guess not as far back as I thought probably 30 seconds to a minute uh, where did I finish on this one I think I might might be wrong but I don't have it in front of me but I think I finished 86 out of 106 on the men's uh, I don't really know for my age category I didn't check that but probably not that good but yeah 86 out of 106 that's not great but that's the way it is. I'm, you know, I, I didn't train that much for it. Really, I didn't train at all for it. And I hadn't been riding for a couple months very much prior to this. So, uh, that's the way it goes. But, uh, you know, I just do it for fun and, uh, that I succeeded. It was, it was fun. Yeah. That's about it for the race. I just sat there and recorded a couple folks finishing after me. There's really not that much else to say. Uh, then after that, I just had to roll down. I had forgot though the way that I usually go down on the mountain bike. There's actually two, well there's more than two, but there's two main ways that I always go down. There's either on the downhill course, there's actually a, a proper downhill mountain bike course, which I got into a big crash on a couple years prior and actually, yeah it was 2017 I think, and actually broke a couple of ribs or one rib or something. But um, here's a photo of that by the way. My friend happened to catch me right in, in action when I was getting ready to take that crash. And um, Anyway, what am, I, what am I saying? You can either take the downhill course or you can take another uh, road down and that's what I usually do and that's what I was planning to do and I did do uh, today, but I forgot that was actually like a gravel downhill so it was a little bit sketchy on the road bike going down there, but I ended up getting down and getting to my car safely so no big deal. Anyway, that's about all I have to say on this race. Again, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or experiences on similar races like this. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear them. All right, talk to you all later. Bye.